Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is officially available, and instead of comparing this phone to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, we will save our direct comparison for Apple's iPhone 12 coming later this fall. But for this video, we're gonna go over some of the features and design elements of the Note 20 that I think Apple should consider adopting and adding to its future devices because they really are good features. Yes, most of these features are not specifically limited to the Note 20 lineup, but the size, power, and refinements made to the Note 20 make these features that much better to use. With that said, our first feature, and I've been saying I've wanted this for a while now, is a 120 hertz refresh rate for the display. Honestly, Samsung displays have always been right at the top of my list for me. These displays are so good. They're very sharp, vibrant, and with this large edge-to-edge -edge design with nearly no bezel at all, aside from the camera cutout, it makes me really enjoy using the Note 20 that much more. Add in the 120 hertz refresh rate and everything feels just that much more smooth. Now, this feature isn't perfect, mostly because it's strictly limited to full HD resolution. There are other phones out there, primarily I'm thinking of the OnePlus 8 uh, Pro that offers 120 hertz at maximum resolution, but with Samsung, for the second year in a row, or for the second release in a row, the company has put limitations on this feature. Hopefully, and if the rumors are true that Apple is planning to add its ProMotion technology, aka 120 hertz refresh rate, into its displays, there won't be any resolution restrictions. Now, I'm sure Samsung is doing this partly due to battery life, but I really still just like having that option available to me, whether I want to turn it on or off. Either way, I love the Note 20 display and I love 120 hertz refresh rate, and I'm really hoping this makes its way into a future iPhone very soon. Now, if you flip over the Note 20, well, you won't really see anything, but what's on the inside here is what's really cool. We have a feature that it could be really useful if this made its way to iPhone owners, and that's wireless power share. Now this feature is also not new to the Note 20, but it's still a great addition to really any smartphone. Wireless PowerShare allows for users to charge just about any device that uses Qi wireless charging on the back of the Note 20. So think of your Note 20 as a wireless charging pad that you can take with you wherever you go. So I can take the Samsung Galaxy Buds Live or Samsung's latest Galaxy Watch and drop it right on the back of the Note 20. And that way I can get a quick charge for any of the devices that I put on the back of the phone in order to keep using them throughout the day. There have been quite a few times where my Apple Watch or my AirPods might need a quick top off so that I can get through the rest of my day and continue using those devices, but I don't have any of the chargers available around me. And so if I can just flip my phone over and use my iPhone and place my AirPods or Apple Watch right on top, or even another phone on the back would be another awesome feature to the iPhone lineup. This next feature has been around Samsung for a long time, uh, especially the Note lineup. And as other manufacturers start to create larger phones, these companies have also started to implement this feature. And that's a split screen or some sort of multitasking feature. I'm not entirely sure why Apple is still avoiding this little software tweak, but being able to work on an email and reference another email or a keynote presentation or some sort of, you know, document would be nice to have. In iOS 14, Apple introduced picture in picture for the iPhone, and that should solve the issue for those who like to watch videos and do other things on their phones at the same time. But with Samsung's split screen view, I can do so much more by having two apps open at once. And I, that's a feature I would just really love to see implemented for some of the larger iPhones that are out there. Next up is something that we were obviously going to have to mention, and that is the S Pen. And while I do admit that I'm not too sure I would want Apple to have a dedicated stylus built into its iPhone like the Note 20, having Apple Pencil support at the very least would be a really nice start. The S Pen for the Note lineup is what makes a Note, well, a Note. And it has been refined quite a bit over the years with so many more features and improvements added. For starters, the latency is basically down to Apple Pencil level, which is crazy low and to the human eye, or at least my human eyes, I basically see zero latency. This improves the entire user experience when writing down notes or drawing. Popping the S Pen out of the note, you'll automatically have the ability to start writing a note when the screen is off, or if you have it on, a list of S Pen features appear, like creating a note, screen write, smart select, etc. 
there are some other very useful features out there that are not specific to writing or drawing, like Translate, for example, which when hovering the S Pen over a specific word on your screen, it will automatically translate that word into your desired language. Finally, the last feature that's pretty great to use is Dex. And boy, would it be great if Apple decided to implement a feature like this in the future. For those unfamiliar, Dex allows Samsung owners to basically control their entire device on a Windows PC or Mac. Your device becomes your computer with Dex. In past iterations, a dock was required in order to use Dex, along with an external monitor and a keyboard or mouse. And you can still do that if you have the required uh, items, but if you have a laptop available and you need to finish working on something that maybe you started on your phone, you can just plug your Note 20 into your computer and now you can finish that you know, task on your Mac or Windows PC. Latency is pretty minimal and it feels pretty intuitive to use as well. I like that you basically have a desktop version of your phone and it's not just a screen mirror of what's on your device. It feels and looks like a full-fledged laptop experience. I know a lot of what Apple does ecosystem-wise would make Dex somewhat unnecessary in this current form. It wouldn't be a huge selling point to connect your iPhone to your Mac to finish writing an email when you already have handoff to take care of that for you. But being able to use some sort of dock or plug in directly into an external monitor, have a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse available, and then have that you know, desktop experience strictly coming from your phone with no other device needed is something that I think a lot of other users might want. Instead of having maybe two computers, they can have one for travel and then they can have an iPhone at home to dock and finish up work that they might wanna do on a larger screen. That would be much more appealing. But that's it, that wraps up some of the features that I think Samsung did a great job with uh, on their devices, specifically the Note 20. And of course, I would love to see Apple do some sort of variation, at least with a couple of these in the near future, but would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.